Hello guys, this is Engineer Vakas Ahmed and I welcome you all people on this platform. In today's video, we are going to discuss how to manage your project when you are working on high-rise building. When it comes to planning, scheduling and control, you need to know all these things we are going to discuss in today's video. So step by step, we are going to share with you all the deliverables, work packages, how you have to manage all these things and uh, classification of building to do a proper building work planning before getting into the planning you should know the knowledge of building categories so the first thing uh, it is crucial to know the following three classifications uh, classifications based on height low rise buildings medium rise and high rise buildings and uh, what are the exact specifications to define these classifications uh, depending on the research done it was found that each country or continent has its way of determining number of stories for the identification of a particular building type so this is due to their zoning and it is well proved by this memo of west quadrant plan project that there are no universally accepted definitions for these terms so what we have uh, how we can define these things uh, generally a low rise building has around four stories mid rise buildings up to 12 stories and high rise buildings more than 12 stories it is important to note that if for example the maximum number of stories is 11 for a mid rise building in a particular area of country the high rise building for them starts from story 12 and then classification based on material so here we have uh, based on structural material there are three main types of buildings which are wooden reinforced concrete and steel structures in addition to these there exist other types of material used for building finally when two or more types of materials are combined to form a structure the result is called the composite structure classification based on occupancy based on occupancy there exist residential buildings institutional educational assembly factory mercantile business and so on structural system of a building each structure in the construction field consists of two central structural systems which are substructure and superstructure substructure will be defined and is referred to the part of the building located below the ground level it is at this level where the foundation is located based on the soil condition and the building mass the foundation may be shallow or deep superstructure this level is located above the substructure that is above the ground level and it is at this level where the building is visible to people the superstructure is made up of roof slabs resting on beams which also rest on columns which transfer their load below to the foundation which finally spread the load to the ground or bedrock below it the superstructure may be done at the site itself or its component may be prefabricated in a factory Principle of high-rise building. In construction planning, one of the most critical steps is the building design. Before design, the architect or engineer must know the following principles. The building construction shall be as per the client specification. The building design should be build-able. The building should respect its life cycle as integrated by the client. The building should be constructed in such a way to be safe and not compromising to the occupant's health throughout its lifespan. The building should be secure against environmental impact. The interior environment of building shall not be less than the required for good health and safety of a performance standard of a high-rise building. The construction planning of high-rise buildings shall be done as per the regulations are standards provided by the authority in charge at a particular place. These standards are based on best practices and principles guiding the mid-rise building or high-rise design by ensuring that they are responsive to their existing as well as their planned contact. They also give some criteria regarding how the planned and the existing building may perform towards each other the following are the performance standards of a high-rise building the maximum allowable height of a high-rise building should be in ratio of one and one with the width of the avenue where it has to be constructed it means that the maximum height of the building should not be more than the width of the road
work breakdown structure for high rise building the construction of a high rise building is a significant work and will not finish by only performing one task due to this reason the work has to be subdivided in, into many tasks or structures thereby enabling a clear perception of the requirement for the completion of a high rise building in management when the work is divided as said above we talk about work breakdown structure this structure will give an, an idea on different projects elements how the work is distributed amid the elements of the project and how the most abundant components of the project work are split up into smaller ones by definition a wbs is a type of template used to specify different works to be done for the completion of a project by also specifying the schedule required for each work major titles are steps to be taken initiation of the project project planning project conceptual design building site assessment scope management building basic design time and cost management risk management bidding activity and choice of contractor detailed design procurement building construction commissioning close out and delivery now we are going to have a step by step having details of each given wbs on this slide initiation of the project 